In this section, we're going to be having a look at the shortest path nodes. Now, these have been recently added into Blender, but it's going to allow us to essentially find the shortest path over the surface. And this is perfect for doing something like roots, because we can basically say, here is my tree. Here is all of the positions that I want my roots to end. Find the shortest path. And we end up with this really beautiful web of branching structures. Our shortest path nodes are under the mesh shortest edge paths. And this node has a bunch of information on it. This node takes inputs, field inputs, and it outputs field outputs. Nothing to do with geometry at this point. This needs to be paired with a mesh edge paths to curves or edge paths to selection. So for example, you can use this process for doing a selection if you wanted to mark seams for UV unwrapping, very useful. Or in this case, we're just going to be making curves so that we can turn them into roots later. So you can see that we have the next vertex index on the shortest edge paths, and we have the next vertex index on the edge paths to curves node. You just plug these through like that. Now, we also have the start vertices on our edge paths to curves, and this is where it's going to help us to actually have a bit of a, an exploration with a simple object. Let's add a grid primitive. I'm going to just view this, period 7, so that we have a view of it. And I'm going to turn on wireframe drawing. There we go. If I maybe set my vertices to 10 by 10, there we go. Now we've got a little bit of a grid to work off here. Let's make a bit more space. So we've got our grid. And I can just plug this straight into our edge paths to curves node. And we want to view the curves that are output. So everything's just disappeared. Let's make a selection for our start vertices. Let's do something simple here. Let's take the index. So this is just, if I go back to my grid and we have a look at our vertices, you can see the index on here, just this left-hand column, is essentially just an integer identifier for each point. So I'm going to say where the index is equal to zero, this can be my start vertex, and my end vertices on this shortest edge path nodes, let's find out where the index is equal to, well, we can go up to 99, that's our maximum. So let's just, uh, let's just drag it somewhere in the middle, 71, that'll do. And let's have a look at what the output is. Okay, not super interesting. <laughs> Essentially, just going in the shortest path to that point kind of makes sense when you start thinking about it like that. Let's maybe make this a little bit more visible rather than just a line. Let's go in and just grab a curve to mesh node and we'll grab a curve primitive curve circle, which I can put on here. Let's maybe make our resolution down to something lower so it's a bit less resource intensive. And we'll set our radius something, something useful as well. Okay, and maybe we can also just preview our original grid so we can see what's going on here. So we have our line coming up and across. Cool. So what happens if we change things like the equals? Well, you can basically say where you're going from and to, and it will just find the shortest path. So fairly, fairly straightforward. So when we're doing something like roots, we would often want to start in one place for our tree and go out in lots of different directions. Let's try this. So what we can do is we can say our start point is going to be number 14, where this is now. And our end point can be every one of these positions after 71. So let's say greater than 71. Interesting. It's only given us one spline. So this is to do with how geometry nodes processes. What we've done is we've made a selection on our geometry node, on our edge paths node, to say, make one spline. So actually, when doing shortest edge paths, when we want a structure like this, we have to go the opposite direction. We have to go from a selection of multiple start points into one final position. So let's try that. Let's switch these around. Greater than 71, down to 14. Ah, there we go. That's more interesting. Now you can see all of these ones are taking their shortest path to the start point. Okay, so still not amazing. It's all just following the grid exactly. 
Let's see how much further we can take this. We have this option for edge cost. Right now, every edge cost is one, which means basically that the length of that edge multiplied by one is how much it costs the spline. It will do the lowest cost that it can. In this case, everything is equal to the same amount, so it's just going to take whichever is exactly shortest. However, we can mess around with this with something like a noise texture. So Shift A, Texture, Noise Texture, and I'm just going to plug this on here into my edge costs. There we go, that's a bit more interesting. Let's maybe reduce our detail a little bit, see how this affects it. So now you can see everything's still going to one point, but it's taking different routes depending on how it thinks is best. So this is really fundamentally how we can use the shortest path nodes. As long as you have edges, you can do whatever you want to find the route through and set different costs depending on how you want them. I'll still move this around, of course, it's still live, it's procedural. So maybe I go to 13. And what can we do about making our curves a little bit more interesting? So before our curve to mesh node, let's perhaps change these from poly curves that they are now. Let's set the spline type from poly, just meaning essentially converted edges, into, let's try nerves. There we go, that's a bit more interesting. How about we set the curve radius as well? Let's come in here and we will just use the spline parameter. So curve, spline parameter. Let's just plug the factor in directly. There we go again, much more interesting going on there. And now what happens if we change our grid a little bit? Let's displace the grid with our noise displacement node, like so. Now, well, now it's getting much more interesting. Let's get rid of our finished one there. And there we go. So you can really see how this is going to start being a good tool for us to use when we try and do something for roots for roots and branching structures this is great it looks so good and so all we need to do is really scale this up right now we're using a 2d grid but of course roots happen in three dimensions so we're going to create a large 3d lattice around our bridge that's one for the next session i'll see you there